My dear friends, I greet you with great joy after a long break. I'm returning to my regular astrological podcast, Your Lucky Stars with Natalie. Today, I want to talk to you about a fascinating and significant period in our lives called the Eclipse Corridor. This spring, in March 2025, we will witness two eclipses. The first, a lunar eclipse, will occur on March 14th, and the second, a solar eclipse, on March 29th. Uh, what is an eclipse corridor? Why do we call it that? It refers to the window of time, usually around two weeks, though it can be shorter or longer, between two major pivotal eclipses. The first eclipse in this corridor will be a total lunar eclipse in Virgo. This is a powerful eclipse that echoes back to previous Virgo eclipses in 2006 and 2007. Think about what was happening in your life during those years. Why is this important? Because the themes that unfolded back then will resurface in your life now, but with a completely different twist. Everything you aspired to achieve or dreamed of during that time may have already come to fruition. But if not, you might now feel those goals were meaningless or unnecessary. Looking back, you may even regret having invested so much effort into things that ultimately didn't matter. This can leave you feeling dissatisfied with yourself, uncertain about your choices and anxious about the future. This sense of self-doubt and discontent is a typical emotional landscape you might navigate during this eclipse period. When I say during this eclipse, what do I mean? It's not the exact moment of the eclipse itself, and not the second before or two minutes after. It can span a couple of weeks before and after. The two days immediately preceding and following an eclipse are always incredibly intense. When discussing how eclipses impact our lives, I always approach this through the lens of psychology because I am a psychologist. For me, astrology is an additional tool that I believe helps both me and others understand where we stand in life. We have a treatment plan in place, things are progressing well, the person is responding positively and we're seeing results. Suddenly something happens that undermines all that progress, erasing the gains made. What caused this? We dig into their work life, personal life, nothing significant has changed. There's no obvious trigger that could explain this shift. Yet the person experiences a severe setback, plunging back into the depths of their depressive state. What happened? At this point, I always ask, what factors are we overlooking? The influence of planetary movements is precisely one such factor. Something most psychologists neglect but shouldn't, because planets do affect us. I won't dwell on this now, as it's a topic I consider self-evident though I do have a separate lecture on it, which I'll share online later for those interested in how planetary influences can be explained scientifically today. But to return to the point, we're now in this eclipse corridor, which can exert a peculiar influence on us this year. Why? Beyond the sun and moon opposing each other, there are also the karmic nodes and two other significant planets in motion. Currently, Neptune is positioned very close to the Sun, which has specific effects on our psychological state. Neptune is a mystical planet, fascinating in its nature. It can create illusions, draw us into the depths of our own fantasies, and sometimes distort our perception of reality. But when Neptune is close to the Sun, that fog, that haze, that delusion begins to dissolve and fade. In that moment, we may see things as they truly are, and perhaps glimpse what we'd rather not see. Because the hardest, most difficult thing in life for a person is to admit their own mistakes. Many of us may confront this very challenge during the March 14th lunar eclipse. Additionally, another influential factor is Uranus, which forms a trine with the Sun, a tense alignment. 
Uranus is known for its instantaneous effects. Its influence doesn't unfold slowly, it's sudden, capable of upending our lives in a flash. It can trigger shocks, events we never imagined, never thought possible or even remotely anticipated. When such things occur, we're left in disbelief. Why am I telling you this? I want you to be prepared if it happens. Accept it as part of life's flow and keep moving forward because life doesn't end there. It's a rare opportunity to look back, reassess everything we've done, analyze our actions, acknowledge our mistakes, let them go and move onward. This process is never easy. To draw a parallel, doctors often say that before a patient improves, their condition worsens, and this is true. This is the astrological moment we're about to experience. We may endure emotional challenges, moments that feel heavy, but they're ultimately positive. They're necessary because they clear the path to the future. When those errors accumulate, they weigh us down, pulling us under and blocking progress. Moments like these, when we must analyze ourselves, reevaluate the past and abandon flawed beliefs, are rare but vital. The upcoming eclipse is one such moment. Seize it. This is an absolutely stunning opportunity that opens the doors to a radiant future. When I speak of this, I'm not referring to any single zodiac sign. I mean all signs of the zodiac. We've entered the age of Aquarius, as you know, but we're also navigating several other fascinating cosmic processes. The constellation Aquarius looms large over everything unfolding in our lives. Within this constellation lies its brightest star, Sadal Melik, a star I call the Golden Gates of Happiness. I want you to understand one thing. These gates open in a person's life only once. Not everyone is fortunate enough to encounter this moment in their lifetime. Why? Because Pluto, a slow-moving planet, orbits the Sun once every 248 years. This means the window we're experiencing now will never recur in our lifetimes, and for many it may never arrive at all. What's unfolding now pertains to all zodiac signs. This golden arch of happiness and fortune is opening for every one of us. But to step through it, one must enter with a cleansed past. This is why the current eclipse corridor we're traversing in spring 2025 serves as the gateway to this arch of luck. Whether we navigate this period smoothly or not depends entirely on us. But remember, forewarned is forearmed. Now that you know what to expect during this eclipse corridor, you understand that the future lies in your hands. I recommend engaging in meditative reflection now. Contemplate the past, recall what was, and analyze what is. But under no circumstances should you rush into drastic actions. Do not do this for many reasons. First, we are still within this tunnel. The eclipse corridor has not yet ended. This is always the most challenging, tense phase. Let me share a few historical examples, which I find fascinating. Why do unusual events often cluster during eclipse corridors? Take 1908, for instance. That summer, a solar eclipse occurred, and just two days later, on June 30th, the Tunguska meteorite struck near the Podkamenaya Tunguska River. Coincidence or cosmic connection? Decide for yourself. I'm simply presenting the facts. Another intriguing date, the launch of the Titanic. The ship was christened on May 31st, 1911, the same day as a total lunar eclipse known as the Blood Moon, so-called because the Earth's shadow gives the moon a reddish hue. The Titanic set sail only to sink the following year. Two days before the next eclipse, a total solar eclipse on April 17, 1912, the ship met its fate. A third example, 1917, when two solar eclipses were observed on January 23rd and June 19th. That same year, the Great October Socialist Revolution in Russia began. That event changed the course of human history. People often ask me, 
Do you think this was linked to the eclipses or was it unrelated? Again, this is for you to ponder. From a psychological standpoint, however, eclipses do influence our emotional states, our depression, our aggression. This influence can extend to human actions, potentially leading to catastrophes. Yes, it can. From this perspective, I believe the October Revolution was undoubtedly influenced by the energy of the solar eclipse and the cosmic shifts of that time. Similarly, I consider the sinking of the Titanic to be linked to these energetic forces. But then the question arises, what about the Tunguska meteorite? There was no human intervention there. Does this mean eclipses also affect nature? Absolutely. Nature is a living organism just like us. Eclipses can trigger cataclysms, floods, earthquakes or other disasters. Given Uranus's current position, the likelihood of such events is heightened. This is why we meditate, stay calm and allow the eclipse corridor to pass or rather we move through it in a state of tranquility, reflection and meditation. What comes next for us? What actions should we take in March, April and May? March we focus on introspection, we reflect on the past and future, analyze lessons and draw conclusions. April we begin planning. Why? because in April both Mercury and Venus will be retrograde. During this period, it's wise to avoid launching new ventures. Of course, if something is urgent, proceed, but if possible, align your plans with this phase and wait until May to act on your dreams. May, this is when we take bold steps toward our bright, fortunate and radiant future. With this, I conclude today's discussion. I wish you a smooth journey through the eclipse corridor, free of disasters or hardships. If you have questions, feel free to reach out. I'll gladly answer. Wishing you all the best.